with this meter attached to the input of the amplifier and this meter attached to the output of the amplifier I can see that when I've got zero volts give or take going in I've got about 80 millivolts coming out of the other side of the amplifier if I want to see what happens when I increase the voltage pretty soon I'm way off the millivolt scale so I'll have to bump that setting up if I increase the input voltage we see a corresponding increase in the output voltage all the way up until we hit saturation and then we get no farther at all till we get back down into range this gain resistor here which is a 56 ohm resistor in this circuit determines the gain the amount by which the input signal is multiplied to get the output signal with 56 ohms that should be about a uh, thousand and seventy five times so way up from three ish millivolts to three ish volts so an increase of more than a thousand from the data sheet we expect that the gain will be following this formula here determined by the gain resistor that we've used and we chose a gain resistor of 56 ohms and I didn't talk much about why we chose it I just chose it so it would be a fairly large gain so that we could see something happening now if we plug that in then we should wind up with a gain of 4 plus 60,000 divided by 56 and if you punch the numbers that's a thousand and seventy five so that certainly accounts for what we're seeing that we're seeing a little more than a thousand times increase in voltage from 3.81 millivolts up to 4.04 .04 volts but if we do the calculation for this gain we can get a better answer than just taking the markings on the resistor at face value so we can also get a measured gain equal to the output voltage 4.04 .04 volts divided by the input voltage 3.81 millivolts or 3.81 times 10 to the minus 3 volts and that number is 1060 so there is a difference here there's a difference of about 15 on the gain or 15 parts in a thousand that's about a 1.5 percent difference between our measurement and our prediction based on the face value of the resistor and that's easily explained as being considerably less than the five percent tolerance on the resistor because this was a resistor with a gold band on its color code if I take some more points here from actual measurements I can see how well our model of a gain of 1060 from our measured maximum gain works out for zero obviously we're wrong because zero should be zero and we're off by 84 millivolts that's a fairly big problem right down around zero because the output of the amplifier will never get to quite zero volts 3.81 and 4.04 .04, that was the basis of our calibration for 1060 gain so of course there's no error there 0.12 millivolts a very small voltage 0.125 volts out if uh, if we use our 1060 gain equation we ought to have got 0.127 volts out so the readings in error by about two millivolts that's within the limits of accuracy of the meter so that's pretty good 0.56 volts we actually got a value lower than we would have expected we would have expected to get 0.593 we're off by 41 millivolts I might almost be worried that I didn't do that measurement very well 1.3 we're within 16 millivolts and so on all the way up so we're within the accuracy of measurement on our output voltage and our input voltage so I've got a fairly high degree of confidence in this gain of 1060 now you'll notice that the measurements of V out go from three decimal places on the small voltages down to just two decimal places on the larger voltages 
That's because I had to switch up a range on the multimeter, which only shows two digits on the 0 to 20 volt scale. If we had just taken the color code for this resistor and said it was 56 ohms, and therefore the gain was going to be 1,075, we would have been very close. But by actually measuring the gain, we get even closer. So we can essentially eliminate the error that we would have got from the wrong gain by calibrating the result.